Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Bio News Network. Uh, we're actually working on a special update for you. Uh, we've been monitoring the storms in the region of uh, Dallas, Irvin, Wachahatchee, Central Texas, as well as Central Oklahoma for most of the most of the day. And uh, we've actually found that it's been very, very severe for a lot of the residents in the regions of even Colorado and Mississippi, with many people, thousands of residents facing uh, severe flash flood issues all across the country. Uh, we wanted to put together a special update um, for our subscribers and, and those that are, are, are in view of this uh, weather forecast going forward uh, just to highlight exactly what's actually happening. Uh, we can actually see uh, from our radar uh, uh, tornado um, advisories in the, in the area of, um, of uh, um, um, in the uh, Al Al Alvarado, uh, Texas, where as well as Dallas, Irvin, and Wachahatchee. Um, as you can see from the system, uh, we're pretty much lining up with the central area of central Texas going into um, also into uh, north um, uh, Kansas. Uh, if you take a closer look, we actually see that this low pressure system, which is our upper level low, is actually making its way further into the region of the four corners. And with that said, uh, we're going to see a lot more thunderstorm activity along the I-35 corridor um, uh, in the regions of um, Dallas as well as uh, Houston. We'll actually see more intense um, thunderstorm activity actually getting into um, uh, uh, later on tonight, Sunday, going into, um, into uh, tomorrow, Monday. We anticipate that it's going to be pretty heavy thunderstorm activity for the regions of um, Central Texas, Kansas, um, and keep in mind the influence of this, uh, this low pressure uh, trough that's in the region. Um, with that said, if we take a closer look at um, uh, the radar earlier today, we can actually see some of the severe uh, t um, um, thunderstorm activity that was in the region of Dallas as well as um, McKinney as well as Garland and there were several flash flood um, advisories in that region also. So that was also a severe uh, issue. Uh, going into tomorrow, we have several flash flood advisories. Uh, we're looking at flat fl uh, flash flood advisories for um, uh, uh, Russell in Kansas, as well as uh, Nuces County in Texas, as well as uh, Matagorda County in Texas, and, and, uh, and uh, Wharton County. Um, one of the issues that we wanted to take a closer look at also was the severe humidity, uh, very, very high uh, saturation level. And keep in mind that a lot of this area in the region of central Texas as well as Kansas is severely saturated from over and over of thunderstorm activity through, uh, for the last few days. Um, we can actually see that uh, going into tomorrow, we'll actually see some severe spots um, in the region of Texas um, as far as severe thunderstorm activity. Um, if we take a closer look at um, two of the criteria we look at as far as severe weather is concerned, which is uh, the top one, which is the bulk sharing, and we also take a closer look at the Cape value. Um, uh, we were looking at readings that were 30 to 40 knots um, at an upper level of 0 to 500 millibars, which is about 18,000 to 20,000 feet in the upper atmosphere, and that contributes to creating increased um, storm relative vorticity, which actually just basically increases the chance of thunderstorm activity developing into powerful supercells, eventually graduating to um, uh, tornado cells. But we do anticipate that um, for Monday, uh, we do have um, uh, flash flood uh, advisories for uh, Dallas area. We anticipate additional thunderstorm activity um, in Colorado near Baca County as well uh, as well as Las uh, Animas uh, City. Um, we're also taking a closer look at possible severe thunderstorm activity in the region of Utah because as that um, upper level trough or low pressure system actually kind of gets anchored at the four corners what will actually happen is that it's going to increase the chance of uh, additional uh, 
additional thunderstorm activity in the region of Utah behind that um, low pressure system as it makes its way further down into the southeast, into the southern, as well as the central plains. Uh, going into to tomorrow, um, we are also looking at um, enhanced risk for the following cities, uh, Lubbock, te Texas, uh, Amarillo, Texas, uh, Plainview, Texas, uh, Pampa, Texas, and Canyon, Texas. And these are actually cities that have been named by the Storm Predic uh, Prediction Center uh, with the natu uh, nat uh, natural, uh, National Weather Service. So basically we're looking at very, very severe thunderstorms continuing throughout the day. Uh, if you also take a closer look at our presentation for temperature anomalies, you can see that in the eastern side of the country, uh, temperatures are generally relatively uh, cooler compared to the northern section of the county uh, of the country where uh, we have temperatures that are 12 to 10 to 12 degrees above normal for states such as Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and also um, Wyoming, North Dakota. So, and then actually you take a closer look at the deep, uh, to the south, uh, southeast states, um, you know, even areas in, um, in, uh, in Mississippi are 13 degrees cooler than normal. If you take a closer look at the Virginias, um, temperatures are like 15 degrees below normal. So there's kind of a contrast uh, between uh, different areas of the country at this time as far as the type of weather that they're facing. Um, going forward into Monday and Tuesday, we anticipate more intense shower activity. Um, we anticipate that um, there's going to be additional risks for uh, severe thunderstorm activity for residents of Dallas and Fort Worth, also Denver, Colorado, um, Oklahoma City, as well as Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and we anticipate going in also for the Texas Panhandle uh, region, um, there's going to be additional thunderstorm activity, folks. We are looking at um, very, very high Cape uh, values, uh, mixed layer uh, convective available potential energy values um, um, to the tune of 2,500 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. And basically to weather enthusiasts, that basically translates into a lot of, of, um, of, of, of uh, potential energy for the creation of thunderstorms. Anything above 2,000, uh, folks, is going to be pretty intense. So we're going to be continuing to monitor the radar going into um, uh, Monday. We just anticipate that um, there's just going to be additional um, thunderstorm activity. Even in range, even in the state of Missouri, um, we anticipate that there will be th uh, severe thunderstorm activity. And we, we anticipate that there will be several tornado warnings issued throughout the state of Texas as well as um, central Oklahoma going into tomorrow. Uh, one of the most important things to remember too is that this upper level low is actually transitioning into the southeast. So as uh, most of uh, our subscribers know um, and you've seen a pattern with our forecast is that we pay very very close attention to what's actually happening to high uh, ridging uh, which is called ridging or high pressure systems across the country as they migrate and what actually um, progresses into that airspace, um, the level of instability. And we do know that as this uh, low pressure trough actually kind of anchors its way on the four corners, and when we see four corners, we're looking at the states of uh, New Mexico, Arizona, um, uh, Colorado, as well as Utah. And Colorado already received a lot of of very, very severe thunderstorm activity uh, for today. So we anticipate that as this low pressure system actually starts making its way further down and those isobars start tightening, it's gonna be more severe uh, thunderstorm activity. Uh, do keep in mind that the surface temperatures of the Gulf of Mexico are quite warm at this particular time. We're looking at upper, um, we spotted some in some areas of the Gulf of Mexico, sea surface temperatures were 80, 81 degrees, and that signals to most meteorologists and weather enthusiasts and, and, um, and storm trackers that um, hurricane season is upon us because once the waters of the Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures hit about 80 degrees or higher, then we know that that is going to be the impetus for 
that's going to be the, the generating power for possibly uh, very, very cyclonic um, uh, forces uh, going into um, starting with June, July, August, and September. And we do anticipate that there's going to be additional storm activity for um, increased um, named storms, increased severe hurricanes, and also um, uh, mapping through um, all of the a majority of the names that have been assigned to this season. But primarily, let's go back to Monday and Tuesday of this week for residents of the Pan Texas Panhandle as well as um, uh, uh, Oklahoma as well as Kansas. Um, uh, do keep in mind that we anticipate that there will be several uh, what's called mesoscale um, advisories, which is basically severe, uh, severe weather advisories for that area. And as always here at Bow News Network, we will continue to monitor the radar and bring those updates to you as soon as possible. Um, one of the prevailing, um, um, one of the prevailing issues with these severe thunderstorms and possibly with, with supercells is that um, on the radar we're seeing that the possibility of hail in a range of an inch and a half to two inches. We're seeing very, very large um, local spotter reports of very, very large hail. And basically, that's basically signaling that the vorticity of these storms allows that um, um, uh, precipitation to keep recirculating and formulating into larger and larger um, uh, um, size hail, which eventually ends up on the ground injuring uh, property, uh, damaging property and causing potential um, damage to citizens. So that is definitely one of the main concerns that we have going into Monday and Tuesday with severe weather activity uh, is going to be very, very large hail. And as always, um, if there are gonna be any tornado um, um, alerts for the region, definitely by all means uh, keep your uh, your ears, your eyes, and uh, your senses open to all, all avenues of media uh, going into Monday and Tuesday so that you are aware of all of the weather happenings in your area. Turn to social media, turn to the radio, turn to TV, whatever avenues you need to protect yourself and protect your property, most importantly your life. Uh, going into the uh, going into Monday and Tuesday because we do anticipate very very severe weather. Um, as far as a severe risk is concerned, enhanced risk, uh, we do anticipate for an enhanced risk residents of um, uh, Lubbock, Texas. Texas, Pampa, Texas, as well as Canyon, Texas, should be a little bit more on the guard for uh, severe weather activity going into um, Monday as well as Monday evening, Monday night. Um, one of the concerns we have also, it all depends on cloud cover, will be the impact of surface heating and what impact that has on the increased likelihood of cyclonic uh, cyclogenesis, which basically means the generation of tornadoes as well as supercells and very, very severe weather. But we do see that there is um, very, very high cape, cape values. Uh, we're not quite sure as far as what um, any kind of capping forces that are going to be impacting the formation of tornadoes. But we do anticipate based on the severity of the enhanced um, uh, uh, advisories from the um, Storm Prediction Center that uh, Monday, Monday evening, Monday night will be difficult.